ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਸਲਾਮ ਯਾਲੀ ਮਦਦ ਹੈਲੋ ਟੂ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਦਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਹਮਾਰੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਕੈਲਗਰੀ ਫੋਕਸ ਮੇ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਕਾ ਹੋਸਟ ਆਪਕਾ ਦੋਸਤ ਅਮਰਿਤ ਬਰਾੜ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਦਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਤਾ ਹੂੰ ਆਪਣੇ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਮੇ ਔਰ ਆਸ਼ਾ ਕਰਤਾ ਹੂੰ ਕਿ ਆਪਕਾ ਲਾਸਟ ਵੀਕ ਬਹੁਤ ਬੜੀਆ ਗਿਆ ਹੋਗਾ ਖੁਸ਼ੀਓ ਸੇ ਭਰਾ ਗਿਆ ਹੋਗਾ ਮਸਤੀ ਸੇ ਭਰਾ ਗਿਆ ਹੋਗਾ ਸਿਹਤ ਸੇ ਭਰਾ ਗਿਆ ਹੋਗਾ ਕੁਝ ਦਿਨ ਮੈਂ ਖੁਦ ਸਿਹਤ ਕੀ ਵਜ੍ਹਾ ਸੇ ਥੋੜਾ ਦੂਰ ਰਹਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਸੇ ਉਸਕੇ ਲਈ ਮਾਫੀ ਚਾਹਤਾ ਹੂੰ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਕੁਝ ਐਸੇ ਹਾਲਾਤ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਖੁਦ ਨਹੀਂ ਆ ਪਾ ਰਹਾ ਤਾ ਸਟੂਡੀਓ ਮੇ ਔਰ ਆਪ ਸੇ ਬਾਤਚੀਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਪਾ ਰਹਾ ਤਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਭਗਵਾਨ ਦੀ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਸੇ ਆਮ ਬੈਕ ਐਂਡ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਆਰ ਮੂਵਿੰਗ ਫਾਈਨ ਹਰ ਵਾਰ ਕੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਆਜ ਵੀ ਹਮਾਰਾ ਜੋ ਸੈਗਮੈਂਟ ਹੈ ਇਨਕ੍ਰੈਡਿਬਲ ਪੀਪਲ ਐਂਡ देयर ਇਨਕ੍ਰੈਡਿਬਲ ਸਟੋਰੀਜ਼ ਮੇ ਹਮ ਇੱਕ ਐਸੇ ਇਨਸਾਨ ਸੇ ਬਾਤ ਕਰेंगे ਅਗੇਨ ਜੋ ਹੈ ਜੋ ਇਮੀਗ੍ਰੈਂਟ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਇੱਕ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਕੰਟਰੀ ਸੇ ਹੀ ਕੇਮ ਟੂ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਐਂਡ ਅੱਜ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਪੂਰੀ ਕੈਲਗਰੀ ਮੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਇੱਜ਼ਤ ਸੇ ਲਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਕੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਫੀਲਡ ਮੇ ਉਹਨਕਾ ਇੱਕ ਆਪਣਾ ਰਤਪਾ ਹੈ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਹਾਊ ਹੀ ਮੇਡ ਅਪ ਆਲ ਥਿਸ ਰੈਪੀਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਹਾਊ ਹੀ ਸਟਾਰਟਡ ਹਿਸ ਲਾਈਫ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਅ ਇਮਿਗ੍ਰੈਂਟ ਆਜ ਹਮ ਉਸੇ ਜਾਣੇਗੇ ਤਾਂਕਿ ਹਮ ਔਰ ਲੋਗੋਂ ਕੋ ਵੀ ਇਨਸਪਾਇਰ ਕਰ ਸਕੇ ਔਰ ਲੋਗੋਂ ਕੋ ਬਤਾ ਸਕੇ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਸਟੋਰੀਜ਼ ਫਰਮ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਪੀਪਲ ਸੋ ਥੈਟ ਅਗਰ ਉਹ ਕਹੀਂ ਕੁਝ ਗਲਤ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਕੁਝ ਗਲਤ ਸੋਚ ਰਹੇ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਉਹਨਕੀ ਰਾਹ ਕੁਝ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਉਸ ਕੋ ਮੈਨ ਕਰ ਸਕੇ ਆਈਏ ਹਮ ਮਿਲਕਰ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਤੇ ਹੈ ਹਮਾਰੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਅਕੁਲੀਸਾ ਉਫੇਦੇਕੇ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਸਰ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਦ ਸ਼ੋ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮਚ ਅਮਰਿਤ uh we've been talking since a uh, long time that you should be here and uh, tell your incredible story today is the day thank you for your time sir well it's a real pleasure to uh, finally be here and uh, happy new year uh, to yourself and to your uh, audience thank you so much sir professor dr ofdk assistant professor at york, york university mein aur uh, इनकी जो उपलब्धियां हैं वो मैं याद नहीं कर सकता इसलिए मैं आपको थोड़ा पढ़ के बताऊंगा हिज रिसर्च इंटरेस्ट इंक्लूड्स इक्वलिटी डाइवर्सिटी एंड इंक्लूजन गवर्नेंस अकाउंटेबिलिटी एंड पब्लिक सेक्टर फाइनेंस ही हैज कंडक्टेड रिसर्च इन फर्स्ट नेशन एंड हेल्थ हेल्थ केयर सेटिंग्स हिज रिसर्च आल्सो इंक्लूड्स डेवलपिंग अ फ्रेमवर्क द सोशियोलॉजी ऑफ इंक्लूजन that purpose practice based approaches to achieve a more inclusive society his research has been accepted and published in leading at accounting and business and public policy journals including canadian accounting perspective financial accountability and management australian journal of public administration and accounting auditing and accountability journal ye kuch cheeze hain जो और कुछ उपलब्धियां हैं जो मैंने आपसे शेयर करी लेकिन मेन चीज है कि किस तरह से एक इमिग्रेंट यहां पर आकर अपनी जिंदगी को बनाता है और कैसे इस लेवल पर पहुंचता है आइए उनसे ही जानते हैं सर टू स्टार्ट विद इफ यू कैन लेट अस नो व्हिच ईयर यू इमिग्रेट टू कनाडा एंड व्हाट व्हाट मेड यू टू इमिग्रेट राइट सो आई मूव्ड टू कनाडा इन इन 2000 uh, फ्रॉम नाइजीरिया आई वाज बोर्न इन नाइजीरिया and uh like many newcomers to canada the purpose of uh moving was really a quest for a better life um you know i, I grew up in a country where um there's uh, many things uh, that uh you know the government could be doing better to help uh nigerians achieve their full potential and so like many economic migrants to this country i felt i would be better off uh taking my talents to a country where perhaps uh i might be able to achieve my full potential absolutely sir and uh, nigeria is one of the uh, you know best countries in uh, you know that part of the world right. now the thing is that we have immigrants from all over the world and my immediate supervisor is also from nigeria so it's it's a, a somewhat you know same culture as we have in india if i'm not wrong absolutely Um and I've I've been to India actually. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. I was in India in 2006 to 2007. Okay. Uh, give or take, right? Okay. Doing some uh, consulting work for the uh BSC at the, at the time. Okay. The, the okay. Mumbai Stock Exchange. Mm-hmm. Um and there's a lot of things that we share in common. Um and and that's uh you know not just uh you know Nigerians and Indians but a lot of newcomers to 
uh, Canada. Right. A, we believe in hard work. Absolutely. Right? Uh, if it comes to uh, putting in the time, putting in the uh, hours that's required to take care of ourselves and our families, we'll do it without complaining, without batting an eyelid. Uh, we're also willing uh, to make uh, sacrifices to improve ourselves and to improve our families. Right. Uh, and this includes investing time in education. We place a high value on education. Um, and so, yes, I see a lot of parallels between, uh, you know, uh, uh, India and the Southeast Asian community, the Nigerian community, and a lot of skilled and non-skilled uh, immigrants to this country because Canada has places a premium on, the, on immigration right. by skilled migrants. Right. So naturally, we're attracting a slightly more qualified demographic than perhaps other countries. Right. And you know, Nigeria and obviously India benefit from that. India is the largest provider of, uh, of, uh, of uh, newcomers to Canada. Canada, right? yes, absolutely. So uh, largest provider of uh, international students to Canada as well. So if you think about it, um, you know, uh, Canada has been a large beneficiary of the manpower from the Southeast Asian continent. Absolutely, sir. In 2000, you moved to Canada. Did you move with your own uh, whole family or just by yourself? Yeah, so I moved by myself. I was uh, single at the time. Uh, since then, my family has joined me, so I sponsored my parents. My parents are Canadian now. The, I, I moved in 2000. My parents moved in 2008. Okay. Um, I've got an elder sister. She's also moved. My younger sister, she passed away last year, but she also mm. moved in 2009 as well. So I was the first one <laughs> in my <laughs> family to come. But since then, uh, I've, I've talked the entire clan into <laughs> moving into Canada. The thing is, sir, this country is so beautiful and so made up of so diverse people that you know it's, it, it feels like you're living in a very different kind of world right Indeed. it's uh, I, I've, I've, world, I've been all over the world and uh, this is the only country where I see people live with so many diverse people people from different cultures different uh, you know um, countries coming together speaking different languages the day i took my oath there were people from diff 25 different countries taking oath and becoming right. canadian right so it was a, an honor to you know be in such a be at such a place where you have so much of uh, people from different pe uh, different countries and diverse cultures come together and build a nation, right? Indeed, yeah, and I've, he I've heard it uh, referred to as the mosaic, right? And that's one of the things that we get, uh, we get right in, in Canada. Um, people come from all over the place. We're able to maintain our sense of identity, uh, our cultural ties, our cultural roots, and yet we're able to integrate into this new uh, society, right? And, and I think Canadian society is better off for it. We can be Canadians without losing ties to our identity, where we're from and still contribute to the overall well-being of this beautiful country. Amazing, sir. So you came to, to, uh, to Canada in 2000. How, what, what was the basic difference you found? Like, did, did, have you ever d traveled before to Canada before moving in permanently? No, so I hadn't come to Canada. I mean, I traveled overseas, but not uh, to, to Canada. Canada. Uh -huh. um, so, um, you know, uh, a few differences, right? I mean, here, um, and primarily when it comes to, uh, I guess, labor market experiences. Right. Um, so I, I spent my career in uh, financial services before moving. I worked in banking uh -huh. uh, for one of the largest Nigerian banks. And, um, you know, at the time I, I moved, I, I, I believe that the core tenets of banking were the same irrespective of what jurisdiction uh, you're in. Uh, but then when I came to Canada, I, I came across uh, this uh, hurdle called uh, Canadian experience. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which, which, which was a little confusing because I thought banking was banking. Uh, so that, 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 that was one of the things that, uh, that, um, that uh, I guess um, was a bit of a sticker shock when I, when I moved. Right. Um, you know, I, I came from a market where uh, international experience was treasured. Right. So if you moved to Nigeria from India, the fact that you have international banking experience would make you more attractive. Back to attractive, yeah. Uh, but then it turns out that the international experience uh, was, was zero. Was, <laughs> was, was that attractive uh, to some of the local banks? Uh, right. We wouldn't hold it against them. No, no, absolutely. Was, that but, is the way that, that it, it works shock. over here, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, I totally agree with you because when I immigrated, I also thought like having uh, experience in customer service, a little bit marketing or sales, it will help me out. But they said, no, it's all zero. You ha you should have Canadian experience. And ca to have a Canadian experience, I should have a job, right? right? <laughs> in the same field. That's when 
I will get that experience. Indeed. No, you're absolutely right. So the, the, the struggle, like you said, Toronto, and which year you moved to Calgary? Right. So I moved to Toronto in uh, 2000, and then I moved to Calgary in December of 2008. Uh, initially, went back for Christmas, and then I came to Calgary finally in January of 2009. Okay, okay. 2000 in Toronto, and then you came to Calgary. Now, you were starting a life which was different from Nigeria, sir. And uh, you had experience, but again, the hurdle which you said, Canadian experience was in front of you. What were the main things you managed or did at that time so that you don't deviate from your path? Because what you are today is all based on that particular moment and what you decided. So if you can let us know what exactly you did and how did you created a path for you which was well lit, where, which led you to what you are today. We'll take a small break and with, after the break because I didn't want to uh, tell in the middle to <laughs> just don't speak because the time is ending for our first break and we'll continue after that. Ek chota sa break lenge aur break ke baad hum log aapse milte hain aur janenge doctor saab se ki unhone kya kiya aisa jiski wajah se aaj wo is level pe hain because jab hum is country mein aate hain hamare paas bahut limited options hote hain to start our life from the scratch lekin jo doctor saab ne kiya wo amazing tha wohi aaj hum unse janenge milte hain ek chote se break ke baad dekhte rahiye program calgary focus only on Punjabi national television. Welcome back. Ek baar fir se swagat hamare program mein. Aap dekh rahe hain program Calgary Focus segment Incredible People and Their Incredible Stories. Aaj hum ek baat hi amazing insans ke saath baithe hue hain jo apni story aap aap bhi di hume bata rahe hain. So to continue, sir, what was that thing which made you find the correct path? So, so for starters, I uh, I was willing to uh, to uh, make make a sacrifice. I, I did refer to that in my opening remarks about uh, the sort of tenacity that a lot of newcomers bring to Canada. Right. Um, so when I left banking, I uh, I was uh, essentially one step away from being an assistant manager in Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I came across this hurdle, right, of um, of Canadian banking experience. Um, so I started by going back to school. I realized I would have to make a trade-off. I went back to school, um, and eventually I took the best job I could get in banking, which was as a teller, which was something, uh, if you compare that to where I was in the bank, uh, that was maybe a role I should have been doing in the bank in Nigeria, maybe eight years yes, before I moved to Canada. Absolutely. So it was a bit of a reset, uh, but I kept my eyes on the ball, went back to school, uh, you know, took um, you know, uh, my Canadian credentials, eventually became certified here in, in Canada as well. And um, gradually I got to prove myself because once I got into the banking, worked as a teller and uh, it became clear that I was operating at a slightly more uh, senior level uh, perhaps, and eventually the opportunities came. But it did involve going back to school, taking some uh, new courses, getting uh, Canadian credentials, and um, making a compromise and, and taking a job that I perhaps was maybe overqualified for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you studied and then you continued on your path. Do you think that taking a decision to study and go back to school was the main key? Absolutely. I think that was the key differentiator. Um, at the time I came, I, I did um, you know, come across uh, some other newcomers. There's a gentleman who was a friend of mine. Uh, I knew him from back home in Nigeria, uh, and he, he uh, you know, went a different path. He did not feel the urgent need at that point in time to go back to school. Um, now, I can tell you this, many years later, he eventually did. So he recognized that there was a value in it, but then he had lost maybe five or six, six years, years, right? So in my case, uh, I came in 2000. By the September of 2000, I was in school. I was in school. Um, so I quickly recognized, I mean, you know, I, I came in just at the end of winter, but I quickly recognized that uh, if I was going to get where I needed to go, I had to make uh, some, some changes, right? I mean, I, I worked in survival jobs. Um, you know, I wasn't happy with what I was making. I felt I could do better. 
and one path to doing that was going to school and I'm really glad I went back to school in the same year I moved to Canada. Professor, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said a very valuable thing over there that what I was making was not what I had thought, yeah. right? But still you continued to go to school because your future was building up. Absolutely. A lot of people, again, I will say this uh, phrase, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of people don't agree to that. They just submit to their needs and they don't think that uh, today I'm making $2 an hour. If I go to school, I will lose these $2 also, right? Or maybe I will get $1. But they don't realize this, that if they go back to school or make a path for the future, maybe that $2 will become 20 Absolutely. Uh, so there's an opportunity cost, right? There's an opportunity cost to going to school. Uh, and that was the same logic that my uh, friend adopted at that time. In fact, he said to me, uh, so back then, minimum wage was eight dollars and change. I forget how right. much it was. I was. Used, I used to get six seventy-five. Oh something. yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. And, and he said, he said to me, so after taking your paying tuition, after taking all these uh, courses, how much are you going to make? make? So to him, it was a waste of time. Waste of time. Uh, but but clearly, you know, uh, if you come through express entry, for example, you're coming here with a degree. You're coming here with a ton of valuable experience that that is very useful to Canada. Um, and and um, that, that you can't set all of that aside and get caught up with the immediacy of survival. You do need to survive, so you're going to have to work in whatever job you can to pay your rent, to take care of your kids, but you have to keep your eyes on the long game. So uh, all of those jobs I did before I got my first, the first job I thought I was qualified for, I consider them survival jobs. In my view, I did them to survive. But every day when I went to that job, in my view, I acted mentally like I was going somewhere else, like it was temporary. It wasn't where I was going to be in the long run. And, and that was, uh, the mindset was important, but also the physical action that accompanied it was also important. Did you have your family support at that time? So at that point in time, I had uh, no family here. I wasn't married yet, uh, but I did have uh, you know, uh, family support uh, from my parents were in Nigeria at the time. And I had a cousin of mine who lived in the UK. Actually, he helped remind me over and over again uh, because you know, there were times when I was starting to think, you know what, maybe I can make a career path from something I was doing. And he would remind me and say, this is who, what you were doing when you were back in Nigeria, right? So you have to get to that same level here. Wow. So there was some motivation, right? Um, because support comes in many ways. It doesn't have to be Financial, uh, financial. Yeah, right. Uh, but even the words of encouragement, um, and every time I spoke to my mom, I mean, you know, she, she, you know, she made it clear that you know there were high hopes for me. Uh, you know, she, they were banking on my being successful, um, and so all of those motivations and, and encouragement really helped uh, keep me motivated. Professor, now you are teaching, and you are leader in your industry. Uh, how could you do that? Like, what was what was the mantra? Like, what what kept you going? The, the things around you that is separate, the motivation is separate. But there are a lot of things which make a person weak somewhere or deviate somewhere. As you said that you took the job of a teller. Some people will say, oh, "That's enough." You know, I, let me just as as your friend you said yeah. was there, or he might have realized after four years. But there are people who don't even realize yeah. it; they just stay there, right? There could be many reasons. There could be financial reasons. There could be reasons where uh, you know we, you, and me cannot see. You know, they maybe they have a certain family back in their respective country where they have to send money, or maybe some people like me who lose interest in studies and they don't right. <laughs> study when they come here. But what was your mantra where you kept on going? Right. So, you know, it, I'll come back to my opening remarks where I said, we're not afraid of hard work, right? right. It, newcomers to Canada, we're not afraid of hard work. Um, I, 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 I tell the joke that uh, I worked in banking. The first c time I used a calculator, I was working for the bank. So before then, any math I had to do, I had to do in my head, Absolutely. right? right. And, and uh, if you think about it, some of the best uh, uh, scientists, some of the best engineers in this world are from India, yeah. right? So we're not afraid of, uh, of, of, of uh, physical and mental uh, work. 
So, um, so when I finished my uh, bachelor's, I did another Canadian bachelor's after I moved, and I saw, I saw, you know, some reward for it because there was career progression, there was an increase in my earning resources, uh, earning potential, and I thought to myself, why stop? Um, I decided if I was going to, uh, I was going to do my MBA. I decided if I was going to do my MBA, I'm in North America. I'm going to hold myself to the standard of going to an Ivy League school. Uh, I got lucky, fortunate to be accepted to Cornell, so I did my MBA at Cornell. Uh, again, I saw an impact to my earning potential. Um, and I said to myself, I'll do a PhD. Now, most people <laughs> in North America don't do uh, a PhD. People wow. don't do a PhD in accounting because you're working, you're earning quite a bit. Um, and so the opportunity cost of going back for a PhD is quite significant because a PhD program here can take four years to six years. Um, but I've seen the results of making those sacrifices and those investments. And so I did the same thing as well. And uh, particularly the last thing that made that decision easy was when I learned that all PhD positions, especially in business, are all fully funded. I was going to get money. Not a lot, not what? as much as I was making, but I was going to get money. money to go do my PhD. And I was like, in Nigeria, you don't get money to go do your PhD. <laughs> you have to pay someone else Somewhere. to do your PhD. Right, so I was sir. glad to take uh, the funding and I did my PhD. So um, it, it, it wasn't all back to back. Uh, so there were, there were, I, was, I was able to reevaluate uh, you know, my successes, my progress in that period. But every time I took you know, uh, account, um, uh, took stock of where I was versus where I would have been, there was, intrinsic motivation to go ahead and try and aspire for more. So in a way, if I sum up your story uh, about moving forward, that you, when you upgraded yourself with studies, with different degrees, you saw a different light. You saw a different path, which made you go for more, right? Absolutely. Um, so and I'll, I'll give one example to tie to it, right? Um, so after I finished my MBA, I'd barely finished my MBA and I got my first invitation to join uh, a public, the board of a public company. Um, that opportunity would never have come if I had not done my MBA, if I hadn't, because I met the individuals that set me up for that opportunity while I was doing my MBA. Wow. So you're right, with every investment I made in myself, in education, um, I, I always came back and reevaluated how has this helped me get closer? Now, that doesn't mean that the, what are, uh, the opportunities that are created by certain investments you make happen immediately. It may not happen immediately. Um, and, and I'll use my PhD as an, as an example. I got in for my PhD in 2009. I did not start working in academia until 2017, right? So it might not be immediate, but I would never have made that transition to academia if I did not already have the PhD. So there might be a lag, but consistently I went back and I reevaluated the investment because I did treat it like an investment. I mean, some of these things cost money or there was an opportunity cost, right? If you go back to school and you live income you're making, there's an opportunity cost. So I was always taking stock to see how those investments were lending themselves towards uh, the aspirations I had for myself. Amazing. چھوٹا سا بریک اور بریک کے بعد ہم لوگ ڈاکٹر صاحب سے اپنی بات چیت جاری رکھیں گے آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں پروگرام کیلگری فوکس اونلی آن پنجابی نیشنل ٹیلی ویژن ایک بار پھر سے سواگت ہمارے پروگرام کیلگری فوکس میں آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں سیگمنٹ انکریڈبل پیپل اینڈ دیر انکریڈبل سٹوریز آج ہمارے ساتھ جڑے ہیں ڈاکٹر اکلیسا افدی کے جو کی نائجیریا سے ہیں اور اسسنٹ پروفیسر ہیں لیکن انہوں نے جو اپلبدیاں یہاں پر حاصل کی ہیں انپیرلل ہیں انہوں نے ابھی تک بتایا کہ ان کا منترہ یہ رہا کہ انویسٹ ان یور سیلف شارٹ ٹرم گینز کے بارے میں نہ سوچیں اپنے کو اپگریڈ کریں جب ایز این امیگرنٹ یہاں پر آتے ہیں اپنے آپ کو ڈیولپ کریں اپنے اندر آتم وشواس رکھیں آگے بڑھنے کی چاہ رکھیں چھوٹے شارٹ ٹرم گینز جو ہوتے ہیں وہ آپ کو ایک لیول تک لے کے جاتے ہیں لیکن اس کے آگے بڑھنے کی جو ایک راہ ہے اس کو بند کر دیتے ہیں لیکن پروفیسر صاحب نے پی ایس ٹی تک کری اور بہت کچھ اس سمیں حاصل کیا اپنی محنت سے ایک ڈیفرنٹ کنٹری سے آ کر یہاں پر آ کر اپنے سٹیٹس کو بڑھایا اور آج ان کو پوری کیلگری جانتی ہے سو سر موونگ آن واٹ ڈو یو تھنک پیپل لیک اور دی 
are not able to see when they come here because you came from Nigeria, I'm from India, but there are people from all over the world coming to this place. So what do you think is the key to be successful? And I'm putting you an example, right. how a person, a new immigrant can be successful in this part of the world when you come as an immigrant. Great. Um, so for starters, I'll say uh, expectations uh, are, are, are important, right? Um, and by that I mean um, expectations and a layer on tenacity, right? Because um, uh, clearly when I came, I had my expectations that uh, in three months I would be uh, you know, working in the role that I think I deserved. Um, and, and eventually that did not happen, but there was a tenacity to stay with it. Right and make sure that I, I, I did not uh, uh, give up, give, yeah, up right. give up or deviate, and I stuck with the plan. So that that's crucial. Tenacity, I think, is going to be critical for success in in Canada. For some people, my my sister, when my sister came, I said to her, "It will take you at least three years before you get a job for which you're qualified." She got a job within four months uh, that she was qualified for. She, she got a project management job working for uh, Husky at the time. Um, so for some people, it won't take three years. For some people, it'll take three years. It'll take two years. And for those where it'll take one year or two years, you're going to need tenacity to ensure that you don't give up. Hopefully, all our stories are uh, all our stories end up being three month stories. Where in two or three months, you're in the job you deserve. No. Uh, but if that's not the case, you're going to need tenacity to stick with it to ensure that. Uh, that you don't miss out on uh, on achieving your full potential um, by uh, you know by one's uh, in, impatience, anyways. Yeah, absolutely, sir. So the kids who are coming over here or the families who are immigrating, what I feel, uh, what I am learning from you is that be focused, invest in yourself, don't go for small time gains, and believe in yourself right Absolutely. and if you want to be successful just keep on working on yourself rather making a compromise with the present situation if you want to be like you right indeed indeed and um, and you know we come at all ages right so you have parents I came I was uh, in my 20s I did not have kids but I have kids today. I have four beautiful uh, uh, children and my, my mom is always the first one to remind me um, you know, there's certain things I do and she goes like, you know, you're a Nigerian, I say Nigerian Canadian, <laughs> raising Canadian <laughs> children, <laughs> right? Um, so, so we also have to find ways to integrate into the society that we've come to. So volunteering is one great way to do it. Um, you know, where I'm from, for example, uh, people don't volunteer as much. Uh, we only volunteer, I mean, primarily in our places of worship. Uh, but, but in Canada, there's going to be a ton of opportunities to get involved in society in other areas, right? Um, I did a lot of volunteering uh, once I understood the value of it. So I'm also going to add to that list one way of increasing uh, your net worth, your network, pardon me, uh, is through volunteering. You're going to meet people who share the same ideals. If you find a course that uh, one's passionate about, volunteering will expose you to other Canadians other newcomers from many uh, beautiful countries that share the same values. And that's one way, obviously, to increase uh, your network. Amazing, amazing. What an incredible story, sir. And uh, thank you so much for your time today and sharing your valuable experience and your way you, which you took when you came to this beautiful country. And uh, I'm very sure whoever will listen to your story will think once at least that when you are here, what is the correct path? Shortcut or a long-term gain which you did to your life and now you are, you are settled and your children are happy and everybody is, uh, you know, gaining what you sold, right? And thank you for your time today again because we've been talking since long time and today is the day you are here. And I'm so, so grateful to you for coming to this uh, show and to our uh, media group.
to share your story, sir. It's a real pleasure, Amrit. Thanks for having me. And thanks for all uh, you do, right? I mean, I've, I've come to learn a lot about what you do uh, in the uh, community as well. Uh, sometimes, um, you know, uh, media personalities, uh, we, we only see what they do, the surface of what they do, but there's many other things you do. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, uh, I'm not going to have to share that with your audience, but, but this man does a lot for his community. This man does a lot for the Calgary uh, community, uh, broader community. Uh, he's just an incredible asset to, to Canada. And that's what makes, you know, Canada such a remarkable place, being able to attract incredible people from different parts of the world and being able to use them to the best of this country's ability to help Canada become a better place. So thank, thank you, you thank you thank you so much for your kind words sir and uh, even in coming times whenever you have time and you want to share any work of yours with us and uh, we are most you're most welcome and we are there for you sir real pleasure thank you so much sir to aapne suna dr saab ne jo bola and i hope aapko pasand aaya hoga aur aane wale time mein apne bachcho ko ya koi bhi aapke yaar dost hain unko aap ye program zarur dikhaiye aur thoda sikhaiye ke apne mein invest kare aur आगे बढ़े थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग पंजाबी नेशनल टेलीविजन और मैं आपका होस्ट अमृत बरार आपसे इजाजत लेता हूं नेक्स्ट वीक दोबारा आपसे मुलाकात होगी एक नए गेस्ट के साथ तब तक अपना ध्यान रखें मस्त रहें खुश रहें टेक केयर